Let's examine. In this lecture, we're going to discuss the electron spin and the magnetic dipole moment that is created by the electron spin. So in 1922, two German physicists, one by the name of Otto Stern and a second one by the name of Walter Gerlach, conducted an experiment that became known as the Stern-Gerlach experiment. And this experiment demonstrated the fact that each electron contains an intrinsic property they called the electron spin and the electron spin creates its own magnetic dipole moment they called the electron spin magnetic dipole moment or simply the intrinsic magnetic dipole moment now it's important to note that the electron spin magnetic dipole moment is not the same thing as the orbital magnetic dipole moment that is created as as a result of the orbital quantum number. So, basically the experiment looks something like this. So we have a furnace or an oven that contains our atoms. Now in the Stern Girl like experiment they used silver atoms, but we're going to use the simplest type of atom, the hydrogen atom in its neutral state. So we have a single electron within the 1s orbit of our um, atom. And we have the atoms, the hydrogen atoms inside the oven they're heated and they basically escape and travel through the following region so we have our south and north pole of a magnet and this magnet creates a non-uniform magnetic field also known as in homogeneous magnetic field so basically anytime we take an object that has a magnetic dipole moment and place it inside our non-uniform magnetic field that object will experience a force and that force will act on that object to change the pathway of that particular object. So basically, if the atoms that are traveling through the following non-uniform magnetic field actually have a magnetic dipole moment, they will be deflected as shown by the following diagram. And this is the viewing screen. So anytime our Adam actually hits the viewing screen we will able we were able to see we'll be able to see that atom because that atom will create a glow on that viewing screen now what type of results should we expect if we use classical theory if we use classical mechanics so based on classical theory we should see a continuous distribution or a continuous spectrum of atoms falling everywhere on this viewing screen because according to classical mechanics electrons can have any type of orientation of the magnetic dipole moment. Now what exactly did the two German physicists actually see when they conducted this experiment? So let's look at our results. Now the experiment showed only two lines were formed on the viewing screen indicating that our atoms only had two possible orientations for the magnetic dipole moments. Now because for a ground hydrogen atom and even for the silver atom that they used in their experiment because the orbital angular momentum is equal to zero because the orbital quantum number is equal to zero that means that the magnetic dipole moment of our atom cannot be a result of L where L is the angular momentum the orbital angular momentum of that atom and that means the magnetic dipole moment must be created by something else and this something else they caused they called the electron spin so they said that each electron contains an intrinsic property known as the electron spin that creates its own intrinsic magnetic dipole moment they called the electron spin magnetic dipole moment. Now basically the electron spin can be one of two types. We can either have a positive one half spin or a negative one half spin. Now if we look at the electron as if the 
electron was an actual particle, then we can imagine that the negative one-half spin corresponds to an electron spinning on its side in the following manner. So as the electron spins like so, it creates a magnetic dipole moment as a result of that electron spin that points in this general direction. On the other hand, if the electron spins on its side with a positive one-half spin, that means it spins like so, and as it spins, it creates an intrinsic magnetic dipole moment that points downward. So that means there are only two types of orientations for our intrinsic magnetic dipole moment that is created as a result of the electron spin. Now, the magnitude of the magnetic dipole moment that is due to the electron spin given by mu s can be determined using this equation. So negative g multiplied by mu b multiplied by m s. Now, g is simply a constant. It's equal to about 2.0023, and this is known as the g factor. Now, the mu b is simply a constant. It's known as the Bohr magneton, which we discussed previously. And the Bohr magneton, mu b, is equal to e, the charge on that electron, multiplied by h bar constant, divided by 2m, where m is the mass of that electron. And finally, ms is the electron spin quantum number. It can either be positive one half or it can be negative one half. So we see that g is a constant, mu b is a constant, and because ms can be one of two values, that means we can have one of two values for the intrinsic magnetic dipole moment that is due to the electron spin. So this is the equation that gives us the electron spin magnetic dipole moment of our electron. And we see that the stern gerlach experiment conducted in 1922 demonstrated the existence of not only the magnetic dipole moment, but also the magnetic dipole moment due to the electron spin. 